and welcome back to my channel. This is Java with Ali and I am Ali. I am a software engineer, programmer, and I've been working in the industry for the last double digits number of years. <laughs> so now today I'm going to talk to you um, through what we covered last week was our first program, so our hello class. And now I will talk through a little bit more about the details of what we can expect so in the previous video, I spoke a little bit about um, how you can kind of think of Java being like you have like a dictionary. And then I also spoke about a class being similar to a house that has properties with it as well, which is quite useful because later on we will use those concepts. So today I want to show you where to look up some stuff within Eclipse as well, and that's the integrated development environment that I'm using. So if you want to know what system libraries you have on your computer that you've installed, then you go to file, properties, and you will see in, you can go to the build path, might be the easiest, um, and you'll be able to see the system library. So at the moment, this is JDK 11, which is fine to use because um, the current existing version has not changed so hasn't changed what we're using it for at the moment so the newer concepts that are integrated into the library so just like a spoken language things get added in and changed and added in and changed and the language evolves as more uses come to play and when we're talking about the integrated development environment we're typing it in english and then it translates later on um, using a Java virtual machine as well. And all of that is within this, um, all these systems that are in place, they're like little cogs in a wheel. <laughs> and then later on, they're all translated to bytecode and then the computer can run it. So for every um, letter on your keyboard that you see that we type in, actually that letter corresponds to a sequence of numbers um, called binary and they're in ones and zeros and those sequences um, depending on where the one is or where the zero is um, in logic <laughs> it's basically switching on and switching off the electricity through the board underneath the computer <laughs> which is kind of cool when you think of it like this so if you think of um, your your bits are <laughs> Um, all being converted and they're switching on and off electricity as well. So that's that's all I'm going to say for on that point. I'll come to more in a, in a while. Um, but this is called the Java runtime environment. And that is your system library. And that has your Java development kit. So that is basically your dictionary of words, similar to when I'm learning German. And I need to convert, in my mind, English sometimes other languages into German and then are they the same meaning where do I use them how do I manage it how, the sentence construction is it the same where do I insert it so it runs <laughs> um, so people understand it um, and in this case obviously it's the computer that will understand it so today we're going to talk a little bit more detail about different ways of this layout and then we're going to add some more to it as well. So we have our package and I said it's like an onion, it's got lots of layers. So we have our package and then within a package you have multiple classes and within a class you have multiple methods. And in this case we're, we're, we have a method here called main. Now there can be three different um, access ways of using this method. For now, we're just going to use public so everyone can see it and access it. The same as when you have a folder on a computer, let's say you have Google Drive or Dropbox or one of those, you can make it private for you or public and it's the exact same with a method. So we have public and let's say we're gonna say void because I don't want to return anything. And I'm going to say my first method. <laughs> um, and that's how you recognize the methods. They're going to be lowercase, um, all one word, 
there are certain rules within the language that you can't use. Um, so you can't start a method with a number, for example. Um, you can't use some of the, the key words of the language, which we'll learn as we're going along. And to end the method name, you need two round brackets. And then we're going to finish it with two curly brackets or parentheses if you're coming from American English. Um, and then we're going to put in another statement. So for now, we're just going to use our system.hello. So that's my next method. Now, the other important part of programming, and it's really good practice when you're in a working environment, because, and it's also really good practice if you're a solo programmer, a solo developer as well. I know myself when I do private, private projects or when I'm in work that I comment my code correctly, mainly because it's one of the rookie mistakes that people make when they code something, they go on holiday, they do a different project, they might be away from it for a day or two and they really put a lot of time and effort into it and then they come back and they're like, did I write that? <laughs> oh no, now I have to figure out what it is. <laughs> and that happens more often than not. And it also happens if you're coming from a school point of view, if you're learning a language and you wrote some homework and you get it back a week later and you're like, oh, I wrote that. <laughs> So that's also important to notice that in your programming practice that you have methods. Now you can do that, you can do automatic methods um, that will be added such as these ones, or you can add single line comments, which are just two slight, this is a single line comment like that. Um, and if you want to use anything to do with your source, you can generate different things up here as well. So I can generate different things which will come to later on um but we can we can do here the first the first important part of the the um integrated development environment is knowing how to toggle a comment so you can see here it's not commented out so you have an error there's your your error what it means multiple markers at this line syntax error it's going nuts because it's just normal english which it's not going to be able to understand. So I'm going to toggle the comment again and it adds it back in. So the other way to read code, which is one of the biggest tips that I got from a lecturer in NY Galway. And he was a great lecturer for teaching me Java initially. Um, and he said, read it, read it the other way that you read in English. So in English, we read left to right. When he said interpreting code or reading code, you might read it from right to left instead. And what he meant was you'll see from this side of the um, of what's happening more than this side. So you'll see here that this is your output, which is high. Um, and if I hover over out, you can see that it's the output stream. And you can see that it's exactly um, system out.println and use everything to do with your with your um, integrated development environment to show you what's happening within the within the program itself. So if I just hover over this as well, it, it tells me what it does. So it says it prints a string and then terminates a line. The method behaves as though it invokes print string and then print ln and we'll come later on to the difference between print ln print and print f as well you can use so if i say just print here here i'm going to write down system dot out dot so here notice that i'm typing with a capital letter here it's also important so if i go system dot and I to get to the next part, this is called IntelliSense. Um, I can just scroll down and this will be my out. And then I go dot again. And I have all this access to all the different types of things. For now, we're just going to look at um, the few important ones that I just mentioned. So one is print F as well. So if I double click, then you can see it. So if I say 
it there's two things that I need to put into it at the moment they're null so to print anything on the screen text on the screen and I'm going to type in like that and I'm going to say now here is the thing that I need to add so I said percentage s and that's basically a uh, a placeholder of what of something I'm going to add into it. What am I going to add? So up here, I'm going to put my string with a capital S to declare a string. I'm going to say um, screen lowercase I'm going to say yeah, hello. I'll stick with hello. And I finish with a semicolon. So every statement should have a semicolon. Pay attention to your capital letters and your lowercase letters. This will matter as you go along. So it's important to get this straight now. Your capital letters are your, you know, your class names. Your capital letters are also string variables. That doesn't happen with int or integer variables have a lowercase. Um, integer int and then I have to sign it let's say zero so for this for example if I want an integer so a number um, it's going to be a lowercase i and you can see that it it shows up here as a lowercase and, it, and you can see the color change as well and I just reduce this down here so in order for me, for my screen text to be shown on the screen in where the percentage S is, all I have to do is go and put it here. And I also need to put my semicolon. So every line finishes with a semicolon. When you have a string, I'm going to start with a capital S. When I have an integer, it's going to be a lowercase i. And I'm going to say, here, percentage n to start a new line. And they're just placeholders. So they're just reserving a part of, um, of this string of text here. And they're saying, oh, I need to search for something. What am I searching for? I'm gonna search for a string. Okay, what's the next part of this sentence here, of this part here what am I looking for so the computer already knows to look over here for your s and then if I put let's say a percentage d d here um and I'm going to say lower case int because because I said lowercase ints are all lowercase that's the only reason why I call it that. Usually you have a very good meaning for your name that you're going to use. But for now, we're just going to look at examples and that's all we're looking at. So that's important. Here we have our method comment. And like I just said a minute ago, we need a comment for it. And I'm going to say this, uh, this first method with no parameters. So I'm going to take that out this first method prints hi and the two variables to the screen okay so variables coming from the word vary because they vary <laughs> um, so they change and, the, and you can change them and this then should run and I go up here to my run and it should print it out on my console hi here it is. And as you can see, it didn't do anything because this method needs to be put somewhere. It needs to be called somewhere. So I'm going to take this method here and I'm going to put it here. And that's all I do. I don't need to, um, to do any, oh yes, static because it needs to be static. I need to do any other thing. This needs to be static because it's being called within a static. We're not going to cover that in today's class. Just copy what I'm doing for now and you will have your first method. Um, here we also need static. <laughs> so I'm going to say um, the static as well. 
and this as well the static so the keyword static is being used everywhere when you call in the methods here as well so now you can see hi text is green i'm going to put in a percentage n here for the new text new line uh, and i'm going to run it again oh yeah because this is in print f <laughs> Also important to note, if you put in any placeholders, you need to use printf. If I don't, then it comes out on, on the text like this. If I do, then you can see that it's a new line. If I use println, that's automatically using a new line, but it doesn't take any placeholders. So if I do this again, you'll see that it actually prints the placeholders. So they're the that's the big difference between using print ln, print f, and also print. So if I save that, run it again, and then you have hi, which is from here. Then it calls this method down here. It goes, where does this word come? It goes, my first method here, and then whatever's inside here, it runs as well. So I hope that's been a useful um, second class. Please, I look forward to your comments below. And if you have any questions, drop me a line in the comments below. And happy programming. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.